Alright guys, so as you can see, I've been out with my drone today, getting some footage for today's video. So today's video, we're going to be looking at the DJI Fly app and looking at the editing suite within the app itself. And it's surprisingly good, so you don't want to miss this one. Alright guys, Neil from Neil Collins Recording. Welcome to my channel if you're new, welcome back if you're not. Either way, great to have you here. Always appreciate you guys being on board and watching my videos. So, so the last video that I did was uh, I was looking at the Prism Live editing suite, a free editing app for your phone. Um, I was just looking at the capabilities of that one. Um, and in the comments, someone said to me, have you looked at the DJI Fly app and the editing suite within that? And I hadn't. I've done a video on the actual app itself and um, flying the drone with it, which you can find up there but I've never actually looked at the editing suite myself. That's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna go from start to finish. I've got some drone footage. Um, we'll edit a video from start to finish and we'll see how the app works. Through doing the last video, I've come around to the idea of editing on, on a phone. Um, it was never really a thing for me. I've always edited in Premiere Pro. I like the big screen. I didn't really see any use for editing on my phone. But, I can see that in certain scenarios, it's, it's definitely an option and, um, and a better option. If you're on holiday, you don't want to lug your computer around with you everywhere. You can do quick edits out and about, wherever you are. Get up to social media straight away in HD quality. So why not? At the end of the day, the output's the, the only thing that's really important. I do quite simple edits, uh, simple transitions. So as long as my software allows me to do that, it doesn't matter what I edit it on. As long as the output looks good, it's in HD quality, and I can do a little bit of colour correction. A lot of it's for social media, so you don't need to go crazy. Add some music, then that's all I really need. So, so that being said, let's take a look at the DJI Fly app. I'm also going to do the screen a little bit different this time. I usually do the side-by-side -side thing, but you don't really need to see me looking all confused when I'm... I think you'd rather see more of the app itself, so that's what we're going to do in this video. So the first thing you want to do is click album in the bottom left hand corner and then what we want to do is you want to go to create in the bottom right hand corner and we are going to look at the templates option uh, later on in the video but for now if you click on pro okay and then it takes you to this screen and this is where you want to import your photos so if you click on the DJI fly drop down box it then bring up your camera roll and all your photos you can import video straight from your drone I wouldn't recommend it, it takes a long time to download video from your drone to your phone. I've just airdropped a file onto my phone from my Mac um, of the footage that I took today. You can integrate any other video that you may have taken that you want to mix with your drone footage on the DJI Fly app. So it's not specifically just the drone footage, which is great. It's just a free editing app, really. I've imported some 1080p footage. You can obviously use 4K footage, but for the purpose of this video, and just to save a bit of time and effort on my phone's part, I've just done it in 1080p full HD. So the clips are quite short and they're in 1080p, so we should have no problems at all. So let's just find my file. Okay, and it's there, the Mavic Air 2 file. When you click on the file, it will give you access to all the videos in that file. And then you just need to click on the top right hand tick box uh, to import your clips so add five top right hand corner and there we go it's put all the clips on my timeline it's really intuitive actually i mean scrolling through it's uh there's no lag or anything which is great if you want to zoom in and out of the timeline just use your fingers to make it bigger or smaller so the first thing that i'm going to want to do to this is reorder some of the footage and all you do to reorder it is hold down on the actual clip and then you just move it with your finger to where you want it on the actual timeline so we've got the clips on now we want some music tap on the music icon and then you go to tap to add music in the bottom left hand corner and then it bring up a, a licensed music library so you can use any of these tracks without having to worry about licensing it's all licensed for you so let's just have a quick listen to some of them i'm not a big fan nah. the 
footage I've taken today is all sort of combine harvesters harvesting and all that sort of thing. So I want something a bit sort of chill. Okay, so that sounds all right. That's the sort of thing I'm looking for. Okay, so if we use that track, it will then put that track into our project. Okay, from the start to the finish of the project. I always edit to the B and there's a great little um, function on here. If you click on the rhythm icon, it will bring up this. And then what you can do, you can actually put little markers of where you want the transitions to go. So you can cut to the beat. So you can go through the track, work out where the cuts are going to be, and then they'll show up on your timeline, which is really nice. So if we play the track, Okay, then if you click the tick button, if you look at the audio timeline now, you can see the little markers. So you can see roughly where you're going to be wanting to put your transitions. So, that being said, let's play the clip from the start and we'll just see if we want to make any transitions on the markers. So we play it here. Okay, so let's just play that first clip again. Okay, so it kind of stops before the music starts and I, I don't want that, I want it to keep moving. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to make a cut right as the music starts and I'm going to delete that part of the clip. And there we go. Now we have that clip in the right place. So if we play it again, so it's coming in, it's coming in and now it's come to that next clip, which is what I want it to do, which is nice. This is all good so far. Okay, and as you can see, we've got our next marker. So if we just make that a bit bigger. So we'll make the cut there. We'll select the clip we want to delete. Delete the clip. And we'll play that clip again just to see how that works. I like the reveal on this because then the sky comes into view. It's really nice. It's nice. Okay, next clip. I remember filming this in, in 60 frames per second so that I could slow it down. I specifically did it so that I could show you how to do it on this editing software. So, if we go to the speed section on this. Click tick, that'll apply it to the actual clip in the timeline. Okay, you can see it slowed it down, that's fine. I want to reverse the clip. So, to reverse a clip, you just click on the clip. There's a reverse icon in your options in the right hand side. So, click on that. And just going to render it and reverse the clip. There, done. So, let's watch that clip now. And there we can see it goes backwards, but. I want it to start just as it's coming over that hay bale. So, I'll make a cut there. I'll delete that part of the clip. Let's play it again. And I don't want that, I only need that section there up to where that marker is. So, I'll make another cut there. I'm just gonna make that a bit bigger so I know I'm in the right place. Make a cut there, delete that part of the video. 
Okay, let's play that again. Yeah, that's nice. I love the, the lines in this one. And that, that one there is just off the marker. Um, but I think that's fine. I think we'll get away with it on this video anyway. So let's just have a look at that one. Okay, so that's the end of the video, but what I, I want to reverse this clip. Let's reverse that clip. So it's just rendering it now and it will reverse the clip. Perfect, so. Nice, and it's just coming down above that farmhouse to the end. So. So as you can see, our music clip is a little bit long for the video now. So what you do is if you, if you tap on the music clip, it will put a yellow border around it, and then you can move the clip to wherever you want it to finish. And you have it there, that's, that's all right. Let's just play that. Okay, so it stops a bit too early now. So again, we just double click on it, make it a little bit bigger. Okay, let's just play that. Okay, so that's near enough. So the way I edit videos, I don't really use many transitions, but if you did want to use a transition, all you do is you click on the transition icon that is now in between each clip. And then you can choose the type of transition that you'd like. So if you want to fade to black, it will just show you what the transition is going to look like, which is nice. Without even going back to the timeline, it will show you what the transition looks like. So that's really nice. You can have your cross dissolve, typical cross dissolve, a blur transition, a white transition, don't really like that, it looks a bit synthetic, a bit naff, uh, and a swipe transition, which would be nice if you're using photos or something like that. Okay, let's just use a dissolve one and put it in the timeline just to show you how it works. So you just click yes on it and then here we go. Okay, so I might leave that one in because it kind of works with the music now. Yeah, I'm going to leave that in. Okay, we'll leave that one in for luck. We've got our music, we've edited the footage to the music, we've added a transition. Um, what else would we want to do? We probably want to do a little bit of colour correction. So what you do for this, if you just wanted to do um, some standard colour correction, if you click on the tone icon, then you can actually change the brightness, the contrast, the saturation, the temperature. It's all here. Use your finger to go negative or positive. And then if you want to add filters, if you go to the, the three circle icon on the right hand side, it will give you all these filters. Uh, so let's just try one. Now they're black and white ones, so we don't want any of that. Um, it's quite nice, gives it a bit of a sepia feel. Let's go with that one, quite like that. You can choose how much of the filter you want on the clip. So 70% at the moment. Let's just have 60%. And it adds the filter to each clip, which is great. Okay, so we've got all our clips, we've got the filter on there, that's all looking nice. So we're pretty much done, I think. So one other thing you can do is you can add text to the video. So you just click on the text icon, click on tap to add subtitles. And then you can just type, and we'll just type in drone. Done. And there we go. It's added the text to the video. You can add stickers if you want to. You know, you can customize your video, add some text, some stickers, and all that sort of thing. It's all ready to upload to social media. And then all you do is you click on the icon in the top right hand corner. Video export soon, 1080p. Continue generating video. Job done.
Okay, so let's just watch the film. Okay, so the film itself isn't amazing. Um, it's just a really quick edit just to show you how the software works. But you get the idea of what you can do with it. You've got all your social media down the bottom so you can upload straight to your social media, which is amazing. Okay, just quickly look at this templates option. You know at the start, we selected Pro to make the edit ourselves. So what you can do is choose one of these templates. So let's choose this five one because we've got five shots at the moment. So we choose the five shot template. We'll click apply. Um, and here we have our five shots, so this, I'm going to do a slightly different order this time, mm, yeah, a bit random, add five, and it will make the video for us, here we go. I mean, it's a bit weird, but you can see that that will work for some of your footage. A really quick way of getting something together and up to your Instagram. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful. I uh, really enjoyed making that. I haven't really tasted the app out at all, so I'm glad I have. Uh, I think I'll be using that in the future for sure. So yeah, between this one and the one that I reviewed last time, it's good to see. So if you have used the app, let me know in the comments below. I'd be interested to know how you guys found it. Comment below which other apps you use to edit with. Um, I'm always interested to know what you guys do. Um, let me know what you thought of the video. Uh, let me know what else you might like to see in future videos. What you need tutorials made on, what you'd like to learn. Um, let me know so that I can build this channel into something that is useful for all you guys. Please like, subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell so that I can notify you of future videos. I'm releasing on a Monday and a Friday at the moment, tutorials, tech reviews, all that sort of thing. So please do subscribe and hit the bell. I really do appreciate everyone that takes the time to subscribe. So please do. I reply to all the comments. So leave me a comment. Um, it'd be great to talk to you guys. I'll catch you in the next video.